this day. We need to come together to fellowship, to worship you, and to honor you. We thank you for another opportunity to rightly divide your word. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to be used by you. Mm. Holy Spirit, I say right now, you are my helper. And I yield so that you can feed us from your word today. We give you all glory and honor, oh God. We give you permission to have your way in this place. Heal, set free, and deliver. Let us move out the way that we might yield to your agenda. Yeah. And we give you all glory and honor. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we bless the Lord. I thank God for the opportunity to come and share with you during your Women's Month. And blessings to all of the women here who are beautiful in your white. Yes. I do give honor uh, to all of the leadership, ministers, and elders who are here in your places as well. And um, I was given a, a theme for this month, um, Women's Month, um, Women Stepping in Faith with Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And I was excited about that because anybody that knows anything about me, I am a woman of faith. Amen. I'm a woman of great faith, and I believe God, and I take his word yes. as what his word says. Yes. And I am one that will give God no rest hmm. until his word comes to pass in my life. I mean, I've seen some things come to pass, and I'm yet waiting for some more things. Yes. Yes. So what we have to understand about faith is faith is a journey, Right. And it is a journey that we are always on. The Bible talks about all of us having a measure of faith. And we have that measure of faith according to the walk that we have with Jesus, right? According to what we need, we have the faith, the measure of faith that we need for our journey. If you could turn with me to Luke, the first chapter. I'm going to read a lot of scripture. I feel like if I don't read a lot, I won't get justice to the text, and I don't want to do that. So I want to start at Luke 1. And I don't know if you haven't had the standing for the reading of the word. You yeah. don't have to if you don't want to. So it's a lot, but I do want to read that. <laughs> And I'm going to be reading it out of the NIV version. All right. And it starts off with, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Verse one, my apologies. Starting with verse one. I'm going to read verse 1 through, I'm going to read verse 1 through 20, and then I'm going to break it up. Okay. Starting at verse 1, it says, many have un undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who, from the first, were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you so that you may know the certainty of things you have been taught. Verse 5 said, In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah mm -hmm. who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the things command, the Lord commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. And they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, 
he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Zechariah, your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people before the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man. And my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happened. Because you did not believe my word. Just that come true at their appointed time. Right. Yeah. I'm going to drop down to verse 36 and it says, and did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son? Old as she is, everyone called her barren and here she is six months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Nothing you see is impossible with God. At this time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women. Mm -hmm. women. And blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to read uh, Luke, uh, the first verse, um, the, just the 45th verse in the King James Version, because I like the way it um, says this word. And it says, and blessed is he, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her from the Lord. Amen. The title of my sermon today is Who is She? And I'm going to put a, a side note for the gentleman here and say, Who is he? <laughs> the word of God is never exclusive exclusive right and always inclusive and so we are celebrating women's month but we want to make sure that everybody understands that the word is for everybody <laughs> so who is she who is this woman that was blessed because she believed who is she 
So as we arrive on the scene of our text, we find at the beginning of the scripture, we find Luke talking to, we find Luke trying to explain to the people that he wanted to make sure that the words that he wrote were accurate. You remember that? That word says many have undertaken to draw up an account of things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully, and I want you to denote the word carefully, investigated everything from the beginning, I too de decided to write an orderly account for you okay. so that you may know for certainty that these things that you are being taught are accurate. So Luke was trying to make sure that everything that he wrote in this word was true and accurate uh -huh. so that when we got it, we would know that it is true, right? Uh -huh. So we go to the temple where Zachariah is uh -huh. and Zachariah is uh, greeted by <clears throat> the angel Gabriel and Gabriel has been coming has met him to let him know that at the time that he prayed the Lord heard his prayer right mm -hmm. how many of us got some prayers we want to know if the Lord has answered because they, they've not come to pass as of yet Amen. Um, and when we get to this scene we, we find Zachariah he is old in age his wife is old in age they want a child they haven't had a child, and they think it's impossible because of the age, right? So they are beyond what they consider their own limitations. And so the so the God that we serve sends an angel to him to let him know that even though you feel like there are limitations in your circumstances, in your situation, those limitations don't apply to our God, right? And he said that you are going to give birth you are going to conceive and in uh, right form fashion in our humanity when somebody says something to us that is beyond our level of comprehension, we say, can this be true? Can this? And, and, and what we're not going to do is look act like we're going to judge Zachariah for saying some of the same things that we say. When we read the word of God and it says that we can be healed and we think the sickness that we have can't be healed, right? Because of our own limitations. So we share in that same sometimes disbelief with Zacharias. When he said, can this be true? And the angel said, it absolutely can be true. It absolutely will be true. And, and, and because of your disbelief, he shut his mouth until the birth. So he couldn't even talk about his excitement about what God was going to do because he did not believe. But we go to the scripture where his wife is excited. So later he goes and him and his wife conceives. And um, we when we get to the scripture where she is um, greeted by Mary, she asks a question too, right? And her question she wanted to know was, who am I? Who am I that God would bestow this kind of miracle on me? Who am I? And the scripture prior to talks about they had favor with God. They lived a, a godly life, right? Yeah. It doesn't say they lived a perfect life, but they lived a godly life. Like there is, God is expecting us to live a certain way before him. As believers, we can't live any other kind of way. We can't live as the world lives. We have to live according to the word of God. God has principles and precepts for our lives, and we are to walk according to them daily. And that's how we find favor with God, right? Yeah. The scripture talks about Jesus is his righteousness that, that belongs to us. Because everything about us is as filthy rags. Yeah. But that doesn't give us permission not to live 
according to the way that God will have us to live. And the Holy Spirit is our helper to help us live the life that God wants us to live. So wherever we struggle, that's where we surrender and submit that in prayer so that God can help us. But the scripture says that they lived upright before God. And because of that, God honored their prayer. Yeah. Even in a time in their life where it seemed like it was too late. Who feel like God is too late? We always say God, God is a saying. I don't like the way they say it, but they say God never shows up when you want him, but he all, he's always on time. I don't like that because if we want him, when we need him, he's going to show up. He's going to show up. Right? He's going to show up because we need him to show up. And so he showed up at, at, at a time in their life where they probably forgot about what they were expecting God to bless them with. Some of us have waited a long time for God to bless us with certain specific things. Am I alone in that? Is somebody else here waiting for God to, to, to answer some prayers that you've been waiting for a long time and you don't know whether God heard you? Be only because he has not responded in the way that you want him to respond. Just hold on just a little while longer. Yeah, he yeah. will show up. Yes, he, will. he will show up. He will show up as we see in this text. He showed up. He showed up at a time that they weren't really expecting him, but he showed up. Yeah. And when he showed up, Elizabeth is excited. She's wanting to know, who am I that the Lord would visit me mm. and bless me? at a time that I thought this was over. We got people that we are connected with that's telling us, you too old to do this. Whatever it is you say you wanna do, you too old, you can't do it, it's over, it looks like it's over, and you just need to give it up. You gotta stay away from people like that. You gotta be hang around people that tell you it's never too late. Whenever God is in, involved, it's never too late. And so we gotta we gotta remember that. So Mary and Elizabeth have this encounter, and in this encounter, what, what which is why why I'm talking about connections. When Mary went to speak to Elizabeth, soon as um Elizabeth heard her voice. The baby inside of her leaped, right? Okay. And so that was because of the connection between the two of them. And so we always got to make sure we connect it to people that make us Amen. leap in ways that we don't normally do. That we get excited about the vision of God for our lives and the things that God has promised us that he will do. You got to be connected to people who will trust that. Okay. And, and have faith with you, connect with you in faith, right? Amen. So that you don't stand by yourself. But yes. even if you do, then they will watch you be blessed with what you are believing God for. Right. And they will be able to attest that you um, trusted God for that. And so it says her baby leaped. And then she asked, who am I that God would uh, visit me? Um, who who am I? And 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 then it says, "Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill His promises in her life." She believed. That's who she is. She believed. This is a woman who believed, even when her husband had some doubts, even when her husband couldn't fully believe. She believed, and because of her belief. She was able to conceive. And, and we needed her to be able to conceive. Because John was came to prepare the way for Jesus, right? So we never know the blessing that you had that God is bringing to you is preparing a way for something else. And so we got to understand those connections. If both of them would not have believed, God would have had to create another way to bring, to be able to prepare a way for Jesus. But Jesus had to have a way prepared for him, and that was through John. And so John had to come and thank God for Elizabeth, who believed that God would do it. So she was a woman of great faith. And one of the things I want to talk about faith today is faith requires belief. The Bible talks about it is impossible to please God without faith. And that's what we see in this scripture. 
It is impossible to, and throughout scripture, we find that it is impossible to, uh, it is impossible to please God yeah. without it. Mm -hmm. Faith is not just something which you speak. There are a lot of people talking about, I believe, I believe, I believe. What I say to people is, I can tell what you believe by what you do. All right. That's right. It ain't right. about lip service. Matter of fact, it's less about lip service. It's less about lip service. People do a lot of talking about what they believe. It really is what you do. And if your actions are aligned with what you're saying, then we know what you believe. For instance, if, if you say you believe God and you have a sickness and you saying you believe God, I, I would see you saying you believe God by the way you live in your life. You live in your life as if you are expecting God to heal you, right? Because there are some things that even when we believe God, there are some things that we got to do that align up with what we are trusting God to do. So if we need to believe God for healing, then there are maybe some things that, let's say high blood pressure, maybe we need to change our diet, yeah. right? So you can't say I'm believing God for healing and you're not walking in that which you believe in God to do. That has to be aligned up with what you believe. If I'm believing God for healing, if I have high blood pressure, I'm going to make sure I'm low sodium diet. I'm exercising, right? I'm, that's my alignment in what I believe. I'm not going to say I believe in God for it and don't do nothing with it. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. Whatever you are believing God, if you believe in God for a house, then you need to align whether it's uh, fix your credit, whatever it is, you got to. You pack your boxes, look for a house. You're not going to, a house is not going to show up to you. Right. right? You got to go and get a realtor. You got to get approved for a loan. Whatever it is you got to do to, for that specific belief, you have to, your actions have to line up with it. And too many of us are sitting in church with the lip service saying, I got faith in God. I believe in God. And we don't got no alignment with that. Our actions are not aligned with that. And we got to watch that because what we want to discover, other people are watching. The world is watching, more importantly. And we want to be witnesses in the earth of who God is. And the only way we can do that is how he manifests itself through our lives. So we got to understand that faith requires action and movement. And sometimes you got to ask yourself, what am I believing? Uh -huh. And then the other caveat to that is, what are my actions aligned to what I believe? All right. Because you're not going to say you believe in anything if you're not doing anything. Okay? Right. Faith also requires uh, protection. Sometimes when God gives you a vision or he speaks something to you, you know you can't say that to everybody, right? <laughs> Sometimes he says stuff to us, and you got to keep it or or you got to be careful who you share it with to make sure you share it with people who are going to be in faith with yeah. you yeah. and not speak yeah. against yeah. what you are believing God for. Yeah. And Elizabeth did this. Elizabeth went away. It say in her six months, she went away. She went away to protect that which God had given her, that God had putting her to be birthed because what she was birthing was a big deal. Yes, yes. John coming to prepare the way for Jesus is a big deal. So she couldn't just be with anybody. She couldn't just haphazardly have herself out in the open. So she went away and she stayed away until it was the time of her birth. So you have to Make sure that whatever you are believing God for, that you are protecting it to the utmost. Whatever that is, you are protecting it. You are protecting it by speaking the word over it, right? The words of faith, you are speaking over it, and you are protecting it from outsiders who don't believe, who don't have faith, all of that. And you just 
keeping yourself, making sure that you are high, making sure that you are protecting it from anything that would bring harm to it. Because we know that the enemy can come and try to steal, kill, destroy that which God has already promised us. And sometimes the enemy don't even let us get that far. He try to take the word because he's going to always try to challenge the word. Right. When you get a word about something, then the next thing you know, here come the enemy challenging. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to be careful to make sure that we are attentive to that. This Christian faith requires us to be intentional about what we do. A lot of us are real passive in what we do as it relates to the the walk that we have our christian walk it requires intention that's why you got to study your word you got to know what the word of god says about everything pertaining to your life right if you need healing how you get healing if you don't know the healing scriptures right if you need provision how you get provision if you don't know the word that talks about god being a provider Right? What about peace? Yeah. We live in a world that's filled with anxiety. Yeah. Right? Because of everything that's going on. You got to know God today. Yeah. I don't know how people yeah. live with him. All right. All right. But you got to know God and you got to know his word. How you speak in peace over you and your family, your children, your grandchildren, if you don't know the word. This is not a passive relationship. This is an intentional. Every day I'm seeking God. Every day we seeking God and seeking his word and praying, right? And seeking guidance for how we ought to live our life and what decisions we ought to make. It's intentional. So whatever it is that you believe in God for, find the word of God and, and put the word up on it. Because one thing God says in his word, he's not going to refuse himself. He's not going to refuse. He can't refuse his own word. And, and Isaiah, he said, listen, you, I give you permission to give my word to me. Right? And sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes God want to know what, what are we doing as it relates to our responsibility for what we want. Some of us just sitting low. We want stuff from God. And we just chill. <laughs> and we just make it and, and then get an attitude when it don't come to faith. You know, we can write this and this yeah. with God and get an attitude and tell him what he said. And, and it's like, no, what are you doing? What are we doing? That's right. Because he, his word talks about he do everything to, to the power that works within us. That's right. So what is the power that is working within you to bring about manifestation of the word of God in your life? Right? Because that's what has to happen. Nothing is going to happen. What we got to understand is the cross, what Jesus did, that's a finished work. That's a finished work. And everything that Jesus was going to do is done. Right? So now he is doing what he's doing through and in and through us. So the power that works in us, what is the power that works in you? Yeah. Right? That's that's what you have to do. Turn inward and say, God, what are we doing? That's what I say to God. What are we doing? What are we doing? This is the we thing. Right? It's, it's his power, but it's his power working in us and through us to bring about manifestation of work that's already been done. It's already been completed. We just waiting for his timing for it to be manifested in our lives. But it's already done. We got to be in agreement with it, right? We got to be in agreement with it, right? We got to agree with heaven for what is supposed to happen here on earth and our lives. We got to be in agreement with them. And that requires us to know what the word of God says. Yeah. And, and, and the only way you know what the word of God says is not just reading, but reading and saying to God, okay, God, what are you saying to me from this word? What does this word mean to me? How does this apply to my life? Because how it applies to my life might be different from how it applies to your life. Because we have, we have different journeys. And that don't mean the word is different. The word is the same, but the word is so powerful, it can mean something different to all of us. Because that's the way God intended to be. And 
check this out. The same word in another season could mean something different to you. You ever read a word, some of the word of God, and be like, I didn't even see that. The last season, I got something else out of that. You know, God has given us fresh rhema out of the word because you need, a, you need another revelation uh -huh. in this season. And so whatever revelation you need, the Holy Spirit is ready to give it to us, but we have to be intentional about getting that and hungering after that yeah. and searching for that and desiring for that. Sometimes we want what God want to give us out of his hand, but we don't want to take the time to build that relationship with him so that we can get it, whatever it is he had for us. Whatever he has for us, out, out of our relationship, it flows, yeah. Right? If I'm reading and spending time in prayer, all of those things on a regular basis, a daily basis, that's going to flow. Yes. I don't got to be like, get me, get me. Mm -mm. Some of us got a long list of prayer that all we ask is, get me, get me, get me. God won't even have time to say, well, I want some things from you too. Oh, <laughs> right? Because he wants some things from us too. He created us for his own pleasure. So he has plans and will for our life. And we should be making time to, just as much as we run in our laundry list of things we want him to do, I want you to heal my mother. I want you to get me the call. I want you to get me the new job. He's like, I got a list of things too. I want you to come to prayer and sit down. I want you to read your word. I want you to go down to church and, and go to Bible study. And I want you to go and be on time for church on Sunday. So he got a list of things, but we don't want to hear what he wants. Uh -huh. Right? We just want to give our list and we want him to grant us that as if that's who he is. And he is so much more than that. So we miss out on having authentic relationships with God when we are not intentional, intentional. about the things that we do. Yeah. And we got to make sure that that relationship is sealed. Listen, the Bible says that we seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be added. We don't have to go before God and cry and beg God for things when we seek in him. All of those things just show up in your life. Yeah. I know I got some witnesses in here that say, you know, got some blessings that you were like, I ain't even asked God for that. And that's because you're spending time with him, you're seeking him, and he's like, I'm going to just bless my child. I'm going to just, because he's a better father than anybody on the earth, right? Right? For those of us who have good earthly fathers, I have a good earthly father. My heavenly father is way better. There's no comparison. All right. Right? And so we got to remember that he desires to bless us, but he doesn't desire to just be named as a blesser. He don't want us to seek him for that. He wants us to seek him for the relationship that he created us for. Right. And it's so much greater than that. So the people that lived up right before him, Elizabeth and Zechariah, because they lived up right before him, they had that relationship. The scripture talks about Zechariah going to the temple and praying. And Zechariah wasn't even praying about a child. No. He wasn't praying about a child. He was he was praying. He was praying, regularly praying. And him and God come in and send an angel to visit a visitation at a time in his life when he not even thinking about what he wants. Some of us got what we want on our minds so much that we can't think about nothing else but what we want. And God is like, I got that, but I got another agenda. Another. Right? I got another agenda that I think you should be more concerned about. And let me, like some people, some of us think we, we God need us to help him. He and he don't. He don't. He don't need us to remind him of nothing. He don't, he don't need us to keep him on schedule. He don't need us to, none of that. We the ones need reminding. He don't. <laughs> And we have to always be mindful since it's the relationship. relationship. And out of that relationship, everything flows. I can't say that enough. Yeah. Everything flows out of that relationship. Every desire that you have, everything that you have cried and, and prayed and sought God for, 
all of those things. God had those things. And he may grant them to you. But the, the kingdom of God is what we should be seeking. All right. Yeah. What we should be seeking. You know why? Because there's so many people that's living in this world that's hurt uh -huh. and going to hell. Yeah. If we don't do what we need uh -huh. to do. As a, and this is the reason why God sent us here. That's it. We're here for a purpose. A purpose. And not our purpose. Right. And some of us are on our own agenda. Yeah. And it's not about our agenda. Yeah. It's the kingdom agenda. Yeah. And as soon as you switch to the kingdom agenda, yeah. I promise you, the things that you desire, the things that you want, will show up in your life and wait. Yeah. And you will try to figure out how in the world yeah. did that happen. Yeah. How did that happen? How did I get that? Ah. How did I get that new job? How did I get this? How did because God said, you are in alignment with where I want to be. Alignment is, I'm speaking the kingdom of God. Everything else will be aligned. And we have got to get on the agenda of God. Yeah. And not our own agenda. This is not our own life. And we know the word says this. I, we are in this world. We are not of this world. We have been in this world to come through this world to do some things to let Jesus let our to be the feet and the hands of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's why we here. And everything we do should be aligned with that. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't know what that is, you should be seeking God. Yeah. To ask him, what is that? That may be in the church. It might be in our marketplace. Whatever it is. And 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 probably we should be doing it in the church and in the marketplace. But all of us got jobs. You got to go to the grocery store. You got to go to different places. You run into people that are not saved or people who need a witness. People who need encouragement. Like some some of us work with people that need healing, and we won't even speak healing because you're not on the heaven's agenda. You're so busy wanting what you want, you can't even see it, that you need to pray with your co-worker so that they can be healed. So, and that, and that all, also that impacted us, our witness. Right? Because people, some people don't even see you as somebody that they can consult as it relates to God. And that's a poor witness. Yeah. Yeah. That's a poor witness when somebody doesn't see you as somebody coming to you say, can you pray with me? Yeah. Can you believe with me? Yeah. You should be such a witness that people call you and say, listen, I got this problem. I need you to pray with me because I know you can get a prayer through. Right? I want you to believe be in agreement with me because I know that you have faith and if you get in agreement with me, this is going to manifest. That's the, what should be happening in your life. And if it's not, not to bring judgment on nobody, but we all, God has given us all the opportunity to make changes in our lives. Yeah. So you need to ask God, where am I not intentional about my faith? Faith is not what you say out of your mouth. Right. Faith is what you do on a daily basis to, to bring about the manifestation of the will of God in your life. And that's not just for one thing. That's for the whatever God wants to bring it out in your life. So whatever it is that you are lacking, change it. Change it. Mm -hmm. All of us got some things that we can change. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of us, from the pulpit to the door, yes, all of us can change some things. Yes, but it's our prayer life, our word life, mm -hmm. the way we live in, right? Heaven forbid our lives are not aligned with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And our witness is not being, uh, our, we don't have a good witness. We talk in any old kind of way. We backbiting. We talking about people at our job uh -huh. in the church. You doing the same thing. We know how we supposed to live. We know. And if you have a problem with somebody, don't tell somebody else. Go talk to the person that you got a problem with. That's what we should do. That's what the word is If you go and talk to somebody else about it, you just being messy, right? 
talk to the person about it. And, and, and if that person don't hear it, there's word for that. Take them, take them and go to an elder or pastor. But you go to the person and not spreading rumors and all that kind of stuff. We got to be better. It's in the Bible. Yes, sir. It's in the Bible. So I, 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 my question for you is, as I said, who is she? And I talked about who Elizabeth was and some of the attributes that she has in her life. Take a minute and examine your own life and say, who are you? Who are you? And think about your faith walk, your faith journey. And are you doing some of the things that makes your faith grow and increase? In the Gospels, God gives us permission. Jesus gives us permission to say, well, we struggle on our faith. Help my unbelief. Yeah. Right. Some of the things right. that we want God to do and need God to do, they do seem impossible. Right. And there are limitations in the earth, right? Even though we don't have to subscribe to them, but they do exist. Yeah. And sometimes we have to say, Ooh, God, that's hard. But you're going to have to help me with that. Yeah. Help, me. help me with that. Yeah. No believer should be in church just not believing and not coming yeah. to the Holy Ghost. Help me yeah. to believe where I don't believe. Because yeah. God will show up right at the point of your need and say, oh, you need help? Let me show you. And sometimes the help is, let me remind you of yeah. what I've already done. Yeah. Yeah. So God has already done some magnificent things in all of our lives yeah. that attest to who he is. Right. Yeah. And not a one person in here can say that ain't true. Right. He has given all of us reason to believe him. But just like the children of Israel, when you get to a certain spot, when you get to a hard place, we forget. We forget what God has done. We have short-term memory. I said we got short-term memory when it comes to God. And in some cases, we have amnesia. But <laughs> we get to a hard place and we forget who God is. And sometimes you got to remind yourself and the enemy. Like, no, my God is this, and my God has already done this, he has already done this, he has already done this, and I'm not going to stop believing him now. Even if it's a hard place, I'm asking to help me believe him. But all of us got enough, and if you don't have enough testimony, you connected to people who got testimonies. Right, right. Everybody is connected to somebody that'll tell you something miraculous that happened. I know you heard about the story about my husband. Yeah. That was a hard thing. Yeah. According to man, yeah. when you got all these doctors saying somebody's going to die, mm. and I had to stand here and say, no, he's not. Because God say he's not. <laughs> Every seven years later, I'm not ever going to not forget what God did. Not ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Like whatever, whatever, whatever the last thing God did, you have to always keep that present right. before you to remind yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. that God is. First of all, He is not the Son of Man that He should lie, Come on. or the Son of Man that He should have to repent. Right. And because it is in His Word, it shall come to pass. Right. There are some things that you have to you have to say out loud. I make de declarations daily for things that I have not seen yet. I declare. I don't know what day is going to happen. Like I don't know what day my husband going to start talking, but I know a day going to come and my husband going to start talking. And I don't care that it's been seven years. I'm not letting the time bother me because God's going to do it in his own time. <laughs> it ain't about my agenda or my husband's agenda. It, this is about God's agenda. Yeah. My husband is already a testimony to the fact that he's alive. He don't want to say nothing. Else. He don't got to open his mouth and say nothing. The fact that he is standing and he is alive is a testament to who God is. Yeah. When you know the report, that the doctors was giving me yeah. and his mother, yeah. you know that there is a God. Yeah. So the word of God, and you have to stand on the word regardless to who is telling you something different. 
People was looking at doctors like they have a place of authority. And what I had to say to the doctor, the one doctor that would not let up, you don't have authority to give life or to take life. That's not yours. And sometimes people need to be reminded of their place. You are practicing medicine. That's not your authority. Because she was very adamant about him dying. I'm not sure why, but she was very adamant about it. And I had to be very adamant about the word of God. And I could not be persuaded by what her and the other doctors were saying. Because we were outnumbered. We had to sit between us. It was like 12, 12 or 15 of them. Now, I could have been like Zacharias and said, well, God is this true? No, I stood flat-footed right. and told that lady, that's not going to happen. And I gave her the word that God gave me. Right. He will live and he will not die. Right. And that's not always easy to do. Right. Right. We have to do it in order to see the manifestation of God. Right. Because if we don't, sometimes that could cost somebody's life. Right. It's too much at stake. Sometimes we take in this like, if you believe in God for a, a car or a job, okay, maybe not that serious. Sometimes we believe in God for people's lives. Yeah. People who are dealing with sicknesses yeah. that are fatal, yeah. and it's not their time, and the enemy wants to take their life. And God is like, no. And God needs people to, he needs believers to stand in the gap and say, it's not over. Not until I say it's over. That's right. And so that's why we all have to keep our faith strengthened. And the only way you do that is to stay in God's word and pray for revelation for God's word for the season that you are in, in your life. We all have a measure of faith. And don't look at other people and say they got a they got greater faith than I got. Listen, you got the faith you need for your life. <laughs> Everybody's life and journey is different. And so we promise that what we need, we got. So you might not need that kind of faith because you don't have them kind of problems. Right? So work on increasing your faith so that you can be met with manifestation in your life. And the only way you can do that is through prayer. Sometimes fasting and consecration. Right? And reading God's word. And allowing God to increase you in ways that we can't do it in our own humanity. In this flesh dwells no good thing. And we always fight in a battle with it between our spirit and our human flesh. And so sometimes our, we allow our flesh to win when we don't want to read the word or we don't want to pray, or we feel like we can skip a day, and then you skip one day, and then it's two weeks, and then it's a month, and then it's only I'm getting the word when I'm in church, right? And I'll have no personal devotion time. How you know what God is saying to you when you get here to hear the word, when you don't have no devotion time, no personal devotion time? No power. That's no what power. that equals. Yeah. No power. When the enemy comes in and comes towards you, you can't fight him because you don't have nothing. No word, no prayers, no nothing to withstand what he bringing to you. And some of us are allowing the enemy to beat up on us in ways that we got victory. We have the victory and we don't have to allow him to have his way because he don't have no victory over us. We have the authority. We have the keys so how many of us are reasoning yes. and how many of us are sitting saying woe is me this is happening and this is happening and this is happening well where's your word I thought you said you had faith All right, and that's why I say faith can't be what you say out of your mouth faith is what you do and what you do needs to be aligned with the word of God for your life. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your manifest presence in the spirit. We thank you that your word has been sown in our hearts on good ground, oh God. 
and we thank you that it will bring forth harvest in our life, not many days from now. We thank you for the manifestation of miracles, signs, and wonders that you've already dispatched on our behalf. We give you glory and honor for each soul that's in this place and every situation that is on their hearts. We pray that you will attend to, but you will show us, oh God, through your word and through prayer how to bring resolution to these things in our lives. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.